So welcome to the latest Haven cast. This is episode number four. I'm with Nick Marinelli. I hope I spelled that or said that right. Excuse me. Or as uh, he just recently told me, his new nickname is Nick the no- Nick the newbie. Well, thank you, Nick. Welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having me, Jeff. It's actually my my my, my old nickname, which I've had for about. 12 years now which people keep asking why i'm nick the newbie if i've been going by that for 12 years but hey why ask well, questions so, so it's not like you're a super freshman of games you just never you know get better that's i, I like to say uh, uh i i peak quickly <laughs> that's I, I, one way to put where, it <laughs> where, where, where I'd, I'd much rather be the the the, the uh, purple stingray uh, i'm the uh the the yellow fox or whatever whatever those two uh f0 cars are i'm the one that accelerates fast but has the lowest top speed f0 or f1 f0 you know you know uh the captain falcon not captain falcon yeah captain falcon he was the one that had the the all-around good acceleration and top speed the the samurai guy had the one that had really low acceleration but the best top speed the scientist guy had the yellow car which was super fast acceleration but low top speed and i feel like there's a fourth one like an alien guy i don't know what he was you know, I honestly should know. I the game is coming back to me. I, I'll have to Google it later. But F Zero, it just I, I didn't play it, so obviously I'm not familiar with the term. That's fine. <laughs> but anyway, so this is Nick Marinelli. He is with a organization called Magfest, and from what it sounds like, because uh, I've never been, but a, a partner of mine has been. It just sounds honestly like a music fest with costumes, games, and arcade uh, ar- arcade machines. Yeah, I mean that's the idea. Is for four days. 24 hours a day, nonstop. We got 200 arcade machines running, arcades and pinballs, console games, everything from Atari up to PS4, uh, board games, card games, guest panels, uh, marketplace with uh, vendors and stuff, and uh, 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 over three dozen live musical acts that are everything from video game cover bands to chiptune artists to DJs. Video games. 24 hours? You, like, you actually mean 24 hours, right? Like. Nonsense. Well, well, not ninety six hours technically. Oh, okay. It's just yeah, you know, it starts starts uh, at around noonish on on the first day, and then goes nonstop until uh, the last day's evening. So you're telling me this is a convention? Of it's a not a convention. Than... It's a okay, festival. Okay. A festival. Oh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> wow. Oh, it's like, okay. A festival that literally, if I were to go at five in the morning. Like, it's still running. I can use my ticket. I can get in. I can go. There, hopefully, there's a musical act, but there's people. There's still people doing stuff, right? Probably one of the most busy times. 5 a.m., really? Well, there's, there's a little bit lull there between, like, 4 and 8 when everyone's either asleep or hungover. Uh, and, <laughs> and so uh, it depends on a little bit, but there there's always something going on. And I know some of my best memories are wandering well, down funny, the but... game room and uh, talking with uh, just, just playing Turtles in Time with complete strangers. Well, it's funny when you say that, um, you know, there's a lull period uh, at MAGFest because like, I, went, I went to Las Vegas uh, two weeks ago and, you know, everyone says, oh, it's a crazy party city and it just never stops. And, you know, actually the party does stop in Las Vegas. You know, I've never partied 16 hours before. It was the first time I ever did it. But <laughs> we, we, I went from six, well, I don't know if it was 16 hours, but the point is, is a 14, a 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. And definitely between... 4 and 8 a.m., nothing is happening. Like, it is a dead period. So I was just wondering, you know, uh, gamers seem to kind of go a little longer cause, just because they're used to the late nights of being on their computer, their consoles and stuff like that. But that's pretty cool, man. I'm, uh, I'm actually really uh, excited because I plan on going to MAGFest this year. But, uh, you know, how long have you been with, been with the organization? Uh, I started at MAGFest, I started going at MAGFest 4. I heard of it at MAGFest 2. I really wanted to go to 3 but couldn't. So I started with 4, and now we're going on 13 so I think that's something like t- ten years. Where have I been? Like, <laughs> like, what what is going on? Like, I've never heard of this thing at all, ever, once before, you, never. You've been living a a normal life far away from the extreme geekery that is Magfest. Oh, okay. Well, you're, 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 you're probably healthier because of it. So basically, uh, I did I done myself a service by not going because I haven't had part of my life sucked away. Is what you're saying? You 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 have you have met more women, you have gotten more jobs, <laughs> and you have wasted less time by avoiding Magfest. Okay, well uh, let's go down the extreme geekery then. So um, obviously people have booths, and obviously you know you said there's arcade arcade games and consoles. Um, give me some of like the lowdown of like you know how how geek can one observe when you're there? Uh, so you know give me give me your observation of Magfest stuff that what people can experience so i mean it's not very often that you get 
uh, a concert hall filled with 2,000 people just in the concert hall, whether it's, you know, 10,000 people all elsewhere in the event, uh, just all headbanging to, to, to rock covers of, of the Mega Man X soundtrack. It's, <laughs> uh, I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, it, it's, it's a huge thing that, that, that's uh, been <laughs> kind of growing up at the, at the same time uh, as Magfest. Magfest was, was kind of half born out of the, the video game music cover band scene and, and OC remix and, and VG mix and all that. Uh, and then we, we've all, we've all grown up together and just as our, our music section has, has grown, the, the, the whole event has grown in, in so many different directions. It's t- taken a life of its own. Uh, it's, it's almost like Magfest is like 12 different events all going on at the same time in the same hotel. Cause it, it's our, our departments kind of have a level of autonomy where the, the arcade department, we give them a budget and they do this. And so, you know, a year later they, they suddenly show up with 200 arcade machines uh, uh we, that's pretty sweet we, we, we tell the music department uh here you have this much money and they say okay we get 40 bands and it's just there and so it, it's 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 every facet of of geekery and and nerddom uh i i remember when i first started really doing the promo hardcore for it i i, I didn't i didn't quite understand that that not everybody liked video game music as much as i did so it was a little bit. It was a little bit hard to get to get my, uh, my my friends to come, but then once I finally dragged them down one year, they're like, "Why didn't you tell me this was here? This was here. This was here. This is so awesome! What we had no idea." And then it was kind of at that moment I realized, "Wow! Like, Magfest means so many different things to so many different people, depending on on, on what part you're a dork about. That that there's there's really something for everybody there." All right, so I'm gonna run down a list and. Uh... Let's not spend like let's not spend like hours on this, but I'm gonna run down a list and I want you to kind of give me a feel for like what would I see if once I mentioned this topic. So like, um, what okay? So like for people who sell stuff, I assume that people sell stuff like at boots. Like, what kind of crazy yeah. stuff can we can we see at Magfest? So, so unlike yeah, your typical anime convention where uh, you have your artist alley in one area and your dealers hall in another, or unlike an expo where you have you know, like, like uh, E3 or Penny Arcade Expo or TGS, where you have big corporate marketing exhibits or purely indie and community kind of events. So our, our marketplace is this fusion dealer's room artist alley where it's almost like some kind of, uh, you know, like a, like a, a, a bazaar, uh, you know, it's some, some uh, crazy market where artists, crafters, uh, uh musicians independent press outlets t-shirt vendors classic. opium dealers of course i mean <laughs> i mean we're, we're we're just next to southeast dc what do you expect <laughs> uh and it, it's it's this awesome independent community vibe uh where you, you could just see handmade stuff and one of a kind of stuff you'll never find anywhere else and it, it's it, it's a really really cool thing to see because you can buy something there that none of your friends will ever get or stuff that that isn't necessarily handmade but so obscure just you know you can you can rife through uh bins of of uh, neo geo cartridges just to pick out the best ones you like and uh, it's random obscure stuff like that all over the place in the, in the marketplace all right um console games so uh, like i know you said atari and you know you ps4 and stuff like that but are there do you have, uh, do the people with, I guess, you know, in the console department with the budget, do they have, like, the really obscure, um, like, you know, dead consoles, like, Sega like Dreamcast, kind of, like, do they have other things, like, from other countries that they, they present there? Listen, mother the Dreamcast is not <laughs> dead, okay? And if you say it again, I'll cut you down where you stand. <laughs> okay, excuse me. Let me take it down a notch. Please take it down a notch. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, lesser played T- uh, consoles like Dreamcast, and not, I'm, I'm not talking about the ROM version. Okay, the point is, is like, is there? I don't know. Like, I, I was talking to um this girl Isabella in this other podcast, and she showed me a picture about a guy who runs an arcade in Miami, um the biggest arcade in Miami. But the point is, is like he's got this massive collection, and there's these boxes of Japanese consoles I've never seen anything like. Before. You know, they're obviously not marketed here, so I'm curious if like that's the kind of the stuff you'll see, you know, uh, in some of the the different areas of Magfest. Yeah, yeah, we we got a lot of cool stuff. A lot of the the classic stuff that you're used to, like NES, SNES, Genesis, 
you know, going back a little bit, the, the, the Atari Commodore stuff like that. Um, we, we have some of the more obscure American stuff like the, the 3DO, uh, the, Yo, the, the, 3DO. Ja the Jaguar, the Virtual Boy. Oh, um, Virtual Boy. Definitely remember that. Uh, some of the super obscure Japanese stuff like, like the, the PC-88. I don't, I don't think we've ever really had those set up because those things are just impossible. Like our computers. Uh, I don't know if we have an MSX. We do, we do have over, over in our our arcade area. I'm not sure why I said that, but over there, we do have a, a collection of, of of older older gaming computers uh, from from the 80s and early 90s. That that's cool to say, but it's it, it's it's stuff that that you you wouldn't normally normally think of and stuff you wouldn't normally find anywhere else. And that that's CDI. Oh, that's that's son of a. Bitch. I just remember those infomercials wanting one. And then I actually played it. I'm like, this was the worst thing ever created. Why did they ever make this? <laughs> Why were they ever even given a budget? Why was this person even allowed to be born? You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So obviously cosplay, I assume, is a big thing there. And people love to dress up. So like, I understand that that's part of it. Uh, and obviously encouraged, which uh, I've never dressed up for cosplay before. I, of the million characters that I love, I probably, I don't, and I, I don't have the patience to make my own. So I would definitely be one of those, those people that goes out and buys a costume. But, you know, uh, is it like, you know, what's the ratio of like people who dress up for MAGFest? Is it like one, one out of 10, you know, five out of five? <laughs> <laughs> ratio, I don't know. You probably see every, every, everywhere you walk, you'll probably see at least one. We have, we have a different attitude towards cosplay than most events do. Cause you know, I, I've been, I've been going to anime conventions ever since I was in high school and you know, not, not to date myself, but that was uh, 13 years ago. I think I started going to these things and uh, the, the cosplay culture in those has, has evolved in, into this. Uh, it, it's almost like, you, you remember how you used to play video games and they were fun and then MLG came around and then people took it entirely too seriously. Oh yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, and so every, the cosplay is just all about this, this, stitch for stitch perfect recreation of costumes and it's not about not about uh, enjoying costumes it's just about sh showing off how good you are and, and and being a complete diva around people that <laughs> don't agree and so the, the 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 two cardinal rules of costuming at magfest are that you should have fun making your uh, your costume you should have fun wearing your costume our our uh our our cosplay event is not a contest it's more like a a roast slash adventure uh so you know we don't we don't really you don't give out first place prize we give out uh uh i, I, don't, I don't know like best use of duct tape kind of prizes oh really so and, it's you know, like uh ingenuity maybe right and and it's it's all about having fun and and the it, it, it let if you have a costume that you spent three thousand dollars on and and you have fun wearing it and you had a blast making it and and uh and you're not all prissy and uh uh uh, uh <laughs> hoity toity i'm the best look how good yeah I know. right exactly <laughs> then, then, then you're, you're gonna have just as much fun as the guy who who got uh who who ordered pizza the night before at magfest uh and then turned it into battle armor I remember for my Halloween party last year at work, um, and this is like this is a political jo political joke, but the point is, is uh, I didn't have one. I didn't have a costume, so you know, I took since I'm the IT guy, I took all these Dell computer boxes, and you know, I made a helmet, and I made a, a, a what is it like, you know, my I, I I just look like a block robot, but you know, the point is, is like I put um what is it a uh, I cut out like a visor for myself so I could see through the top part of the helmet, and then yeah. on the front. I said uh, free mammograms, and on the back I wrote uh, courtesy of the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare, and so uh, pretty much that was my costume, and that's kind of something I probably would uh, would wear. Hopefully, I wouldn't kick, get kicked out of Magfest, but uh, you know, it's just like I, I'm one of those. I just you know, costumes or whatever. Actually, the, for me, the crappier a costume, the better it is, just and because I want to have fun with it, and it's just a joke. Uh, like I feel like I didn't read enough Dunesbury because I'm not getting the, <laughs> the, the. Is it is it that that that. I'm not getting it. You're gonna have to explain it to me here. Mammograms, the the oh gosh, this right, is right, terrible. Right, right, breast, <laughs> breast cancer screening. Right, but he got, but he got shitty boxes. Re really shitty boxes, exactly. And so the point is, is like you know, I, I have a picture of it. it. It's it's really bad. But the point is, is like you know, when it comes to a costume, the crappier it looks, the more ru uh, rugged or just rubbish or just trashy it looks for me. That's that's the fun of it. I just actually make it something you know. So that that's kind of what I enjoy about costumes. But I see what you're saying. It's like it doesn't matter if it's like you know the guy's got tax or freaking you know it, he's yeah. covered in post-it notes. It's the fact. It's more like you know you're just having fun. Yeah. Gotcha. All right, so we went through cosplay. We went through like you know the bizarre type of uh, 
Indian style. Sh- uh, was it a shop? And then um, that, 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 there's B A Z. How do you spell that? It's not B I Z A R R E. It's the other one. B A Z A A R. That's it. That's, That's all you say. The there you go. There you go. Come on, man. <laughs> they obviously hired you. They hired you for your public relations skills, not for your spelling. Hey, listen. I've read that. a lot of emails, and Chrome takes care of that spell check. <laughs> So what else is unique about MAGFest other than, um, you know, you've already mentioned a few unique things uh, about the attitude, but what else is unique about just the the whole festival in general? Well, we, we are probably, what's unique about us if you compare us to to other gaming events is that we are well, completely fan and, and community run. We do not have any corporate sponsors whatsoever. Uh, all all of, our, of our funding comes from, from ticket sales and these, and, and the, the, the the tiny fee we we charge for for our our vendor tables, and so you know you won't see anybody's banner hanging up ex- except for for Magfest logos, uh, and and we we like to keep it that way because we're not about uh, big corporate marketing of all the latest and greatest products coming out and everything that you should buy that's gonna that's rated eleven out of ten by IGN. We're just about getting <laughs> getting together as, as friends and having a good time and partying for a weekend with games. So you're very familiar with Gamergate, then, aren't you? <laughs> I'm extraordinarily familiar, but <laughs> well, that's actually something that you know. Hopefully, once um, you know, because obviously, GG Haven, we're very new. We're looking for content writers, but that's um, you know, the whole Gamergate about just like the collusion between these AAA uh, studios and also like the people who write uh, the, the reviews and give them very favorable review- reviews. The thing that we've we've said before is we just feel that there is like a loss of, loss of honesty, just a loss of true true, true critique well, or something like that. If you're if you're willing to get into it, I'd, I'd kind of like to talk about that a little bit, not to not to change yeah, well, the topic. Let's, let's 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 take this rabbit hole for a minute. Yeah. Uh. So so I I understand like on the surface, Gamergate see, like co- collusion. Real quick, to, real quick, real yeah. quick, real quick. Give your explanation of what you think Gamergate is for the audience. Uh. What I think. I want to. I want. I want to go over the whole thing. Just to, okay. So the Gamergate tag. It seems like the 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 pro Gamergate supporters feel like Gamergate is about collusion between developers and reviewers, and the the anti Gamergate people feel that it Gamergate is about sexism. So, okay. so Gamergate on its surface. Um, is is, is 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 I mean it's saying it's saying that 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 developers and and uh, and reviewers shouldn't be colluding, uh, but the the whole thing started when when the, this this woman uh, supposedly slept with with someone for for a good review, and as as far as everyone can tell, uh, she never got a good review of it. So, but 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 that aside, if you look at the world of of gaming journalism. Uh, and and the the giant Doritos ads splattered everywhere, and uh, you know the front gamers page of, love their Doritos. <laughs> the front the front page of IGN with a giant Destiny ad on it, and meanwhile they're they're given Destiny a, a ten out of ten, and uh, that may be a poor example. I don't actually know what they gave them, but you know, Ger- you know the whole Kane and Lynch thing. I I I, f- I feel like uh, if you are going to criticize. Uh, the um, the collusion of of, of developer. Uh, if you're going to cr- criticize the game industry, I think you're looking at it from the entirely entirely wrong angle and looking at the smallest little imperfection and and uh, losing sight of the mass corruption on 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 a business. It's it's kind of like when when you say uh, that like. The the, the 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 people with, with low income are ruin, ruining the, the the economy when actually it's the you know the the, the greedy uh, high one percenters was, right and and so so I I, I watched I watched the, the the GamerGate thing start from the beginning and I can understand why pro gamer gators are really are fed up with being called misogynists and sexist because. Like what, what? What am I misogynist about? I just think that there shouldn't be collusion. But the whole thing started just because a a girl, uh, well, a, a couple of girls, uh, Zoe and and <laughs> Anita, Anita Anita Sarkeesian, who who happened to release the worst timed video ever 
uh, after the, the Zoe Quinn stuff broke, and then you have Anita Sarkeesian talking about how, how, how games are sexist, and and then game journalists are giving Sarkeesian positive uh, feedback, and, but people are like, no, there's too much collusion. The, these, the, these developers and these... I keep saying collusion too much. I need a new word. And, and there, there, there are so many uh, things that are wrong with journalism in gaming, because it's it's not even really journalism. It's 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 a it's trade publications. It's everything's just an advertisement for everything else. I think these personal relationships that that arise between developers and and reviewers are just su- such a small, insignificant part of the problem. That focusing on it is is a, a waste of energy, and 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 you should really be be focusing on the major multi-million dollar sponsorship deals and not that little podunk indie game developer who happened to get a few extra downloads well we'll definitely have to talk about this another time uh since we don't want to hijack or yeah you know, basically steer away from the conversation that is magfest um now i guess my other question uh going back to it but thank you for thank you for your input on that because you know that's definitely something i would want to uh, maybe if you want to do it like a separate podcast give you like a yeah. little 15 minute soapbox you could just go off on, on it as much as you can well i mean i would have more of a discussion about it because you know it doesn't do much good for me to talk into a vacuum without having someone to have counterpoints right 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 absolutely so um yeah we'll look at that at another time so we're going back yeah. to MacFest. is it um is it only an east coast thing or do you guys do this all, uh, all over the united states we're, we're, we're starting to expand in, into events out in the west coast we've got a couple concerts in the in the in the bay area coming up in october uh, and we're we're partnering with a San Jose based uh, Magfest ish event called Rockage, Rockage San, okay. uh, San Jose, and okay. so that that'll be uh, in February in the Bay Area. Nice. So, um, so you started on the West Coast. Uh, you're doing the big four day event uh, that's going to be in Maryland at the National Harbor. So, any other locations that you know people around the United States might look for Magfest? Uh, obviously, they can go to the website, but um, you know, just wanted to hear from you. Uh, our our game over con- touring concert series pops up uh, everywhere. You know, the, we have one coming up in in uh, in San Jose, and we have a few in Baltimore. Uh, where else? We've done it in Austin. Uh, in, in, in Central Virginia, we have Mag Stock, which is uh, <laughs> which is ca- camping and bands and chip tunes. Which really? is, which is actually it's it's pretty cool because the campground has electrical sockets at every oh. at, at every station. So, that's, pretty, that's actually pretty neat. Yeah. So uh, so you can actually have like arcade machines or just you know uh, a night really nice George Foreman grill. Basically, you can have all the electricity you need to camp out and make the experience definitely not camping. It is the most communist thing you'll ever go to in your life. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, uh, it, because just it's a bunch of people with a bunch of campfires. Gr- grilling meats and 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 drinking beers and everybody's sharing their meats and beers with each other throughout the entire event and everyone sharing is there. caring not communism what is wrong with you <laughs> we're we're i didn't say it was a bad thing it's it, it, it it's uh it's it's very it's great how you just you you bring your drinks and your your meat yeah i'll bring the meat if you know what i mean <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh and 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 uh you know your games and your projectors and tvs and you know, you're just having fun with. I don't know. I guess we had like 200 people at, at, at the last one. That's pretty cool, actually. So, I mean, it's out in the field. It's just a different vibe, a different take on it. Um, you know, I kind of thought that this was like a, a building venue kind of festival, not something that you take outdoors. But at the same time, it, it doesn't surprise me because it sounds like you guys kind of like um, not. Well, I guess we're resourceful. Resourceful, but I was gonna say you're kind of like a fringe festival. Like you'll you'll party anywhere. It doesn't it doesn't matter. You'll figure it out. Pretty much. I mean, it's you, you should you should see that the only reason we exist today is because we're able to figure stuff out. <laughs> if, if if not for for our, our our handiness combined with our cheapness, we'd be dead in the water long ago. <laughs> <laughs> the frugality and efficiency. It's it's a it's a beautiful marriage. Exactly. So, so what about the music? Uh, is it always rock, or I mean, there's a bunch of folk folk music? Uh, is it always based on games, or are there like some crazy reggae bands? Uh, just you know, so people can get a feel for what what kind of music scene they'd get. Well, the common thread running through the whole event is that it's music is all video game covers or video game inspired, though the the genre can change wildly depending on on the band. Uh, you know, we have a, a lot a lot of traditional rock bands play, but we also have um, uh, uh, there's a an or, uh, orchestral 
band called Select Start that they they played a few years ago. Uh, Hip hop, uh, nerdcore like like Mega Ran or Professor Shy Guy. Um, with jazz fusion from from the One Ups, who've more recently gone a little bit more funk. We did have a, a bluegrass uh, uh, folk '80s pop cover band play last year. How that does that even work? <laughs> it, it, it it's so good. I say it. It sounds so terrible, but it's. And when when they when they emailed us, we thought they they were trying to apply for Magnolia Fest in Florida, which is a folk music festival. But as it turns <laughs> out, they did get the right email address, uh, and, and they they were they were pretty good. We liked them a lot. And what is their name again? I actually want to kind of check them out. Love Cannon. <laughs> it's better than Lust Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> it's much more gentle. Exactly. Um, well, that's pretty neat. Uh, I'm actually really excited to come and check it out this year. I know, I, you know, I was just thinking, I'm like, four days is that's a lot to party, especially if it goes 96 hours. But I can only imagine just you know, the visual and just like you know the the over over sensory overload kind of thing. Just you know, with with the, the art and basically the music and just you know the nostalgia of old games and stuff like that. So you know, it's kind of yeah. getting me a little hyped up to check things out for sure. Yeah. Um, so it is entirely volunteer uh, run and you said uh, so like you know if someone is thinking about maybe being a vendor uh, is that something you can talk about like you know what is a what does a vendor booth cost or anything like that uh, so we, we keep our our vendor booths dirt cheap to to make sure that the the little guys can uh, can still compete uh, with with the with the t-shirt vendors who have a little bit more infrastructure behind them and so so the first table is 150 bucks and that's for the entire weekend uh, and then if you if as you get bigger, the second table is an additional two hundred, and the third table is an additional two fifty. But uh, that, that's that's our general pricing structure. But we we opened marketplace applications because we we use a adjudication process. It's not first come first serve. We we make sure that we have a, a nice even spread of high quality merchandise. Okay. We open we open that back in August, and that closed that filled up in three days. So basically, there's no room for any new vendors, is what you're saying? Yeah, but if you are interested in vending at Magfest, which a lot of people are, um, application for Magfest 2016. We'll, <laughs> we'll, Not we'll, even 2015. Not we'll, even 2015. Huh? They will go. They will go live the same Friday as Oticon, which I believe is July 24th next year, and that's on that's on our website. Okay. Now let's get into something that um you know because we talked about honest journalism here so um. No, this isn't like a question I want to ask you. I'm not trying to slander or make fun of Magfest, but like I'm, Do I'm it. curious. I no, I, I'm not. I, <laughs> you'll cut me. You said that earlier, and that was just about the Dreamcast. Well, motherfucking uh, Dreamcast. Is, <laughs> I was married on September 9th, and it's for reasons that are quite obvious. I hope. <laughs> um. All right. So, what are the biggest challenges about you know running a thing like uh, well, an event? Excuse me. Um, like Magfest. So. You know, what, what are the, obviously dealing with vendors, but, uh, you know, maybe some things that people wouldn't think about, some real challenges that make the event really hard to run. I mean, first off, it's just the, the time required. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're almost entirely volunteer, but we, we now have two and a half employees. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 one of them has been around for a year, but we just recently hired one and a half more. And it, it's, as it turns out, it's, it's more expensive not to hire them than it is to hire them. Because just the amount of shit that falls through the cracks when it, when it, when it comes to to getting orders for any kind of uh, a, a signage or or any any equipment or or taxes or or lawyer fees or anything like this, like if you don't have people dedicated to do this, you're just you're going to pay for it in in spades. And so Absolutely. when you when you have fifteen thousand attendees showing up to an event, uh, you know you you. Everything you do, you have to do big, but if you're volunteering your time, which the vast majority of us are, it means you got to spend a lot of nights and weekends just going over those those Google spreadsheets and talking with all the other volunteer department heads and making sure that everyone uh, ha- has everything squared away. And 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 not everyone is as dedicated as us, so we we really we always need more volunteers to come help out. Uh, you know, if you're pre-registering for Magfest, there's a volunteer checkbox on the pre-reg form. So make sure to check check that that box and, and check what departments you're interested in volunteering for. And, and we, we, we give perks the more hours you work. You, know, you, get, you get a t-shirt and you get food and you get a badge refund. And then you work enough, you even get a badge refund for next year as well. 
So what's the badge uh, refund exactly? Uh, what's what, well? I, let me ask basic. So what is the badge that you get for a volunteer? Like what does that mean? Well, when I say badge, I mean your 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 pass to the. Event. Oh, pass. Okay, okay, that's uh, simple then. Got it. Yeah, yeah. In in the convention slash festival world, you know, you always you you, you buy your badge for the event, and so. Uh, but but speaking of which, we do have a um, a higher tier of of badge should you choose to, uh, you know, purchase your, your badge. Um, that uh, uh, you know, like like I said, we're we're nonprofit and no sponsors, so we we, we take all the help we can get from the attendees. So we have our supporter package, which gives you a swag bag, T-shirt, and uh, and a, and a, a, a custom <laughs> a custom badge with 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 any name you want printed on it. Uh, I don't know if there are limits to vulgarity, but there might be Unicode limits in there somewhere. So be oh, aware of that. Cool. But and it, it, it's all it's always themed differently depending on what our theme for the year is. So okay, so I understand like definitely managing people, especially because volunteers. It's one of those you get what you pay for kind of thing. I mean, you're not paying volunteers. Um, and also at the same time, it's like, it's, it's hard to tell someone what to do when you're not paying them because it, you know, there's no incentive. So I understand why you guys had to hire some few people. But Um, but thankfully, like the vast majority of our volunteer force, like they, they, they understand, they get MAGFest because there's really nothing else like it. And so, so they are, they are dedicated at least at, at event time. And I guess the whole thing is this, this, this balance of, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're a sub 1000 person event, you can kind of get away with uh, with with winging it on a lot of things when it comes to to waiting for uh, equipment uh, donations borrowing to come in, but when you got all oh, that many people waiting for you, you really have to get stuff nailed down months ahead of time. And well, in our case, you, you know we're contracted out to 2020 in that venue, so you really have to keep your eyes down the road and make sure that you're you're, you're protected on all angles in case anything catastrophic happens. Well, speaking of catastrophic, um, are you able to talk about some of the things that definitely went wrong for uh, Magfest? Ah, uh, I mean, I, I can tell you about <laughs> that the fact that you should never ever vandalize the hotel because as <laughs> as laid back as we are about everything, we will f- you over if you if you cause damage to that hotel uh, because we that our hotel treats us so well, and so we try to to accommodate them as well. And there is there is cameras everywhere, so if you hypothetically walked down a hotel hallway knocking down exit signs and tearing down room placards i can assure you that you would hypothetically be arrested within the next 45 minutes was this the hypothetical possibility this, in this, the past this this was the first night before the event even started at our <laughs> new venue <laughs> that sucks man was that person wasted oh, of course oh that, that and, makes and, more sense and that's, that's, that's no excuse no, absolutely um, not. <laughs> I, 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 other catastrophic things. Uh, you know, we're in January, so so snow some, sometimes takes takes a little bit bite about out of our attendance. But it's never been. Cross your fingers. Knock on wood. Uh, hasn't been catastrophic. Uh, right, right, right. But, but you haven't you had know, like toilets explode or like pipes burst or just you know a random. No, fire. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> we've we've had a fire alarm we had, in our last venue. A fire alarm went off because. I don't think anyone's actually maliciously pulled the, the fire alarm at Nightcrest before. Knock on wood. Um, <laughs> that's not fapping, guys. Okay, that's not fapping, guys. That's, that's good luck. Knock on some wood, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, fapping really is just knocking on wood, if you know what I mean. But, <laughs> hey uh, um, the, the fire alarm went off because a, a sprinkler main pipe froze and burst. And apparently no sprinklers means automatic fire alarm. Uh, other times, I don't know. I feel like there was one time a guy, a guy, a guy jumped into the Potomac River in the middle of January, and his friends were really worried. So they pulled the fire alarm so that the paramedics would come. That's ridiculous. Like yeah. that's that. I, I even to jump in the Potomac River. See, like I'm not afraid of cold water. It's just it's it's a, it, I don't know how sewage can grow that much. You know, it's 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 like a well, ocean it's, of sewage. It's 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 downstream from from Washington D.C. So, <laughs> well, I guess you're right. Anything's possible, right? Oh yeah. man. Uh, but going back to what I said about uh, you know, making sure you have all your bases covered and then hand to hand with catastrophic things. Magfest five back when we were I don't know 800 900 people you know one night we almost didn't have any microphones for our concerts because one guy got pissy that during a song review uh, panel no one liked his song so he took all the microphones he, he brought and left and so we had to run out to guitar center and buy a shit out of microphones uh you know, and so that's that's one thing where you got you got to have that infrastructure to uh 
to, to, to support your, your people. And, and I can assure you that, that we are not in, in uh, danger of having microphones uh, <laughs> stolen from, from so now what you're on. Telling me, what you're telling me is MacFest 13, what this means is, is you're not amateurs anymore. To, to my understanding, you guys no, we, we definitely have no idea what we're doing, and I actually have no <laughs> idea how we got this far. <laughs> uh, uh, and 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 th th though I say um, having our infrastructure is in place, we always always welcome and gladly accept uh, and any any contributions and equipment from attendees that want to. If they have something that they think is cool and want to show off, absolutely bring it. Uh, there's a, a very sizable chunk of of what you see at Manifest is brought by attendees, whether it be. Uh, giant statues in the hallways or it's a huge supply of, of board games and card games or just some uh, uh, obscure Japanese system or games that you just want to see people play. We have um, uh, attendee run tournaments. You know, usually if you ever go to an event, they just have, you know, Street Fighter and Marvel and Smash Brothers. But we have something where, where attendees, if they can provide copies of the game, we'll provide all the hardware to play it. So if there's any game you, you want to see, uh, a tournament of you know run it yourself at Magfest. we have one guy who does a yoshi's cookie tournament and he brings cookies to give out to everybody <laughs> that's awesome uh yeah. my a secret like one of my favorite all-time games and i don't think has ever gotten enough love in the fighter section is bloody roar i love bloody roar one through i think they're up to four now but just the concept of turning into an animal and just literally biting someone's neck and like seeing them die of blood loss is amazing to me but i mean i don't know if anyone's gonna have if they have a tournament there I'm there. I'm taking two days off. I'm not. I'm not showering for four days. Like I will win that tournament, and I'm not that good. So like you know, that's one of my little guilty pleasures. Do it. <laughs> Run the tournament um, yourself if you have to. Yeah, if I got to, man. I, I was actually hoping to show up and like take pictures and do a video. And that was actually something I was going to ask you. Is that is there a problem with press, or do you guys like have a press, um, well, uh, press pass or something like that, or not uh, really? Our, our 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 stance on press is that we hate the press. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Except you, Josh. You're the best. Thanks, man. Thanks. I appreciate that. No, uh, you, you know, in case you haven't figured it out by now, MAGFest is kind of not, not necessarily counterculture, but uh, it, it is definitely the antithesis of, of most of the, the mass-marketed uh, gaming media world. And uh, we, we have a couple people on the, on the – well, one guy on the, on the board who, um, you know, he, he's 40-something. He, he – founded a game company in the 90s he was there with the genesis of e3 and he, he, he he's used to uh the uh, uh we'll call him graybeard call you know, him gray so like he's been around he's been around for a while is this his name is paul good and he's insane <laughs> beautiful that, that, that's an introduction <laughs> um uh what's the word i'm, I'm looking at the, the, the entitlement of of major gaming press thinking because and it's not necessarily their fault it's these huge companies like like Sony and Microsoft are sucking these these decks so hard, giving people plane tickets and and uh, uh, and free Xboxes and everything just so that they can get coverage of their game. You know, fancy that we're talking about Gamergate earlier, and and we 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 just. <laughs> You know, we, we tell we, me we, how you really feel, man. Sorry, just tell me how you really feel. <laughs> we, 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 we can't we can't stand that that kind of entitlement that that comes with that. If you're going to come to Magfest, you should come to Magfest to have fun. Not not to get special preferential treatment or, or or get super exclusive access, you know. And even we almost kind of treat our, our guests like this, you know. We if you if you come to Magfest, you should be coming because you're gonna hang out with with the attendees and, and have fun, not because you're gonna collect a, a huge appearance fee, sign autographs, and disappear in your room for for four days. And right, so right, right. so so the policy for for for, for press uh, is, is the same policy for everybody. You can photograph, video record, audio record, anything you want, and release it uh, online for free, absolutely anywhere. Uh, uh, just if you, if you if you have any plans on selling it, you, selling it, you just have to talk to us first about that. No, absolutely. And I was just more like, because um, like this is something that's you know right up my website's alley, and I was like, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure, because you've done 13 of these, so someone has obviously probably done interviews, but like it was just be cool thing to do get some content like yeah and, and, and stuff if, like if that want, so. if you want interviews um you know you e email me with 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 a list of, of people that you're interested in interviewing and then I'll, I'll i'll ask them see if they're up for interviews and if they're up for it i'll just i'll i'll either i'll just swap emails uh give you guys each other's email addresses and you guys can work it out on your own that's pretty sweet man uh but, well, speaking but, of guests go yeah, ahead sorry go ahead well e even easier than that i i highly encourage just walking up to any of the guests at the event and be like right. hey you up for an interview and most of the time they'll be like sure why not Sweet man. Um, well, so when you say guests, uh, who are the types of people that show up to Magfest? 
Uh, uh, well, I should say, like, what kind of guests? You know, is it actors, or video game developers, um, just it, uh, like. It's ahead. usually like a combination of uh, voice actors, uh, internet personalities, and uh, video game music composers is usually the, the three three main categories you see. So when I say internet uh, personalities, people like the Game Grumps, uh, Ego Raptor, uh, John Tron. Who else? I'll tell my head. Let me bring up our website. See who else are we of? You can, you can cut this out of the interview. Well, like, <laughs> go and figure out who our actual guest was. Well, been. I've been there for a while, and I I, just, I don't know any of these people, so like I'll try to pronounce their names. But I see Yoshihito Yano, no clue who that is. Yu Miyaki, no clue who that is. Barry Kramer, um, I see like Aaron Ego Ego Raptors. You mentioned uh, Hanson. So like, right, I've yes. never so, heard of these people. So yeah, I mean, in, in in certain certain circles, like you remember how I said Magfest is kind of like uh, uh yeah, twelve events. Uh, all happening at the same time at the same right, venue. Right, right, it's right. it's actually closer to like fifty because um, <laughs> Magfest has become this community meetup hotspot for for all these different fandoms. All these people who who can't necessarily or don't necessarily want to make their own event, so they just use Magfest as as their meetup spot. Since we're just such a uh, conducive environment to to hang it out and partying and meeting up with your friends, because and you're so, just so nice that you allow that to happen. Well, exactly. I mean, listen, I, I, I don't get paid for this. Maybe like you know, <laughs> two and a half people do, but that's that's why we, 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 we you know, we're, we're not doing this because we're pulling in millions of dollars from sponsors and advertisers. We're, we're doing this because thanks to ticket sales, we get to put on ridiculously cool shit every year. Like yeah. this Yoshihito Yano and Yumiaki are, are the composers for the, the Katamari Damashi series of video games. Okay. And and they're going to come and do uh, DJ performances at Magfest. And you know, where where else do you get to, to to see cool stuff like that? Three three years ago, we had Nobu Uematsu and uh, the Final Fantasy composer and his his band, this full band, to come out and perform at Magfest. And that was that was such a thrill to see, not only for us as organizers, but but as as attendees of that event. Because I've been listening to that shit for 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 thirty years, uh, right. and it, it was so cool to see that in person. And that 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 packed concert hall, which was the largest concert that venues ever had, uh, also they they enjoyed that as well. That's sweet, man. I mean, uh, it's nice to see that actually. You know, you guys have grown so much that you're actually attracting just you know people from all walks of life, especially in the gaming industry, whether it be music or voices. Um, but that's actually really exciting because again, I've never heard of it, and I feel. I feel like I'm uh, insulting you because I've never heard of it. The point is, well, is like, so, so, so it's, it's, what's what's what, what's your what's your background? How how did you get in, in, into gaming and and, uh, and and game journalism? Well, um, so game journalism, I'll start with that. Um, I had a falling out with an individual, and you know, it was along the same lines. So I decided uh, to use that anger and use that frustration for good. And lo and behold, literally two months later, I can't believe that you know, there's a website, there's a forum, and there's you know, we have VoIP servers. The point is, is uh. You know, I wanted to get in game journalism just because, I mean, who doesn't like making news and directing the conversation? And also trying to actually uh, make an impact. So the biggest thing with the impact is like asking the real, asking the tough questions, not being afraid to like, you know, not get up in someone's face, but just, you know, be like, you know, why are you still going down this path? Like example, Battlefield 4, this is an example. You know, they have a perfectly good game. And this is a talking point of my, my friend Patrick, who I mentioned earlier. But he's like, you know, why I love Battlefield 4, so I'm excited right. for this. Well, basically, he, you know, he was like, I have a bone to pick with EA because, you know, we we're trying to get a interview with EA. And he's like, why are you going with this whole cops and robbers BS? Like, there's already <laughs> plenty of games that are doing it. You know, you got Battlefield Hardline. Like, what is the what's the point? Like, you have something fine. You have a, a cash crop. You got a baby. Take care of that. You know, why just go off and split off in this new direction? So it's like those are the kinds of questions I want to ask. And I just it's like even in journalism today, um, you know, and it always depends on who's president, you know. Um, the point is, is that actually I want to ask those tough questions. And if I get alienated, I get alienated. But the point is, is like I'm not afraid to ask someone a tough question because, you know, I, I like honest conversation. I'm a very honest person. Like, you know, I'm not perfect, obviously, but, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes. But also at the same time, it's the point is, is like, you know, don't treat your 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 customers out there like babies. Yeah. I mean, like, and, and what I mean by that is, like, look at World of Warcraft with all those, you know, expansion packs, how the dungeons over the years got easier and easier, and they were catering to people because they were complaining and they didn't like the challenge. And it's like, that's not, like, you know, like, gamers out there, we love a challenge, but we also, like, you know, we're not dumb. There are people who are very smart out there, you know, they got engineer degrees and they're doctors and they're, or they're DJs. The point is, is, like, they got a brain and, you know what, they can hold a consistent conversation and, you know, like, that's, that's kind of what I want to do with my journalism. But anyways, so how did I get into gaming? Um, 
typical stuff. Dad made the mistake of uh, buying a console and I got hooked. And, you know, it's funny when I was, um, I, I was really hyper as a kid. I mean, like to the point you wanted not to just backhand like 10 times, but you actually want to throw <laughs> this kid down the stairs and just yeah, hope that he'll that. pass out. <laughs> you know, that sounds so, familiar. Yeah. So like this one time when I was, uh, I forget how old I was. I want to say I was like s- between six, six and eight. Um, one of my family members was getting married and my aunt told my mom, don't bring him because if you do, he's just going to run around and ruin the wedding. And so my <laughs> mom made the suggestion, what if we bring the Nintendo and literally at this wedding, everyone's dancing, talking, vows are being given, like people are taking drinks and I'm on the side playing the Flintstones, like you know, <laughs> first Flintstones NES game, dude. I was just like, like you got like, I th- I'm looking back on it and I'm like, they compromised like that worked, but it's like, that's how hyper I was. The only thing that kept me still was video games and sleep. And so <laughs> the, the, that's kind of how it was. Um, you know, works. So obviously, yeah. It evolved from Nintendo, SNES, the Sega to, you know, I tried the Saturn here and there, but uh, you know, it was basically, basically Virtua Fighter is what got me hooked. Um, <laughs> and then in, you build your, you buy a PC when you're a kid, you try. How, it out, uh, how you good are you at Virtua Fighter 2? I don't remember, man. I think I tied it maybe five times because my mom used to, well, my mom still cleans houses for a living. Uh, and so when I was a kid, what she used to do was take me to all these people's houses and everyone had different things. It was N64, Saturn, Dreamcast, SNES. The point is, is like, you know, I didn't want to clean the house and she didn't want to pay for a babysitter. So I would just go and, you know, <laughs> raid, raid and pillage people's video game consoles. So like here and there, uh, I'd go back to the same houses and play Virtual Fighter, but it wasn't like, I wasn't uh, hooked on it. Everyone had Donkey Kong Country. So I always played Donkey Kong Country. All right, I don't know because because Paul Good is a virtual fighter fiend. So if you're any good at it, he's always looking for more uh, competition. I loved. I mean, I'm a button masher, so maybe I'll win a few rounds off of the guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. It's like I wholeheartedly agree with you. You know, I do think you know this is going back to the whole gamer gate. I do think that there is some form of collusion, and I like I kind of want to break that mold on. Um, you know, we did that. We did an interview with uh, Capcom Vancouver. We actually were able to get an interview with them. And, we, you know, we had some questions formulated, me and a few people. And, you know, we asked some tough questions, you know. And that's the point of it. It's like, you know, no no gaming industry or no gaming studio is perfect. And, you know, they all cookie. They use the same cookie cutter um, technique in most video mm-hmm. games. And so, and it's like, we're, stop using, stop using what doesn't work, you know? And that's, that's the point. It's like, we want to question them. It's like, are you lazy or do you not have any creativity? Uh-huh. And, and in this business, you give the bad review and then you don't get the free shit anymore. And that's, well, and that's, that's the unfortunate. Well, that's the thing too. And you mentioned like, you know, the whole press pass when I asked you like, can I go and take videos and like asking it for interviews? Like, you know, to me, like, okay, does, does a free ticket to MAGFest sound pretty enticing? Yeah. But the point is, is like, this is something I'm learning that I'm passionate about and that I love, but I'm learning. It's like, I'm really not trying to be like a lyric of Twitch where I expect everything given to me. Um, that's not, that's not my aim for it. The aim is to actually provide good and meaningful content that people appreciate. And like, you know, they say when they hear Gigi Haven and hopefully one day it's a household name, the point is they're, they're like, you know, they try their asses off, you know, they're not scared to, you know, ask the tough questions and you know, you know, like they've been ostracized and I'm pretty sure at some point, like someone's going to slander me. The point is, is that, <laughs> you know, I, I kind of want to break that mold. Oh, yeah, God. I got gotcha. so. you. That, 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 that's respectable. I'm glad that, that people are actually standing up. Got, got a little Gersman Jr. here. It's making me proud. <laughs> I'm glad you got a Gersman Jr. I have no idea who that is. You'll have to maybe refresh my mind. Jeff, Jeff Ger- you don't know Jeff Gersman? No, I've never heard of oh, him. <laughs> okay, so so I mentioned Kane and Lynch earlier. That was the birth of Giant Bomb because uh, I, I think it was GameSpot uh they had canon lynch ads everywhere on this site and jeff gersman was a writer for uh for GameSpot, and he gave canon lynch a shitty review and he got fired for it the next day or the day after or something like that and that was that was a huge thing uh in, in the game journalism uh, industry or whatever and uh G- giant bomb was was formed of, of gersman and, and his friends trying to make a, a, a site that just wasn't spectacular show reviews <laughs> yeah well are, are they still around by chance i mean i could google yeah giant, giant bomb is, is still around and they are they are huge uh they, they have panels at pax every year people love them that's good yeah i mean i'm a huge newbie when it comes to this like i was pretty much you buy the triple a title play i never really got into the nuts and bolts behind it so yeah. it's been actually really interesting going from you know a participator in the gaming and gaming like buying the games playing the games 
to actually like now trying to get involved in behind the scenes and you know meet people network it's just it's really different uh and i like it but i'm learning so much like i i had no clue about female dota uh dota 2 you know i did a an interview with a girl named millie on that and you know i have no idea about csgo and how big that is like it's just like i'm really i'm trying to become i guess a jack of all you know yeah and it's impossible to, to know everything but um yeah so MacFest. um so what are the dates for it this year the 23rd through the 26th, that's actually a Friday through a Monday. Sorry, January 23rd through January January 26th. That's a Friday through a Monday. Things kick off uh, Friday around noon-ish, and they'll just go nonstop until Monday evening. And uh, I guess for final statements, um, is there anything really special you're doing this year that you never did before last year? I, I think uh, the the Katamari Damashi series is hugely popular. especially The, the, the soundtrack is legendary. Uh, and so I, I believe this will be uh, the composer's first ever uh, DJ set in the United States. So this is, this is something to come see because it's going to be cool stuff. Probably once in a lifetime. Uh, if he's coming all the way from Japan, I assume is where he lives. Yep, right there in Tokyo. Okay. And uh, I was going to say, I guess, like, um, where can people find out about MacFest? Go ahead and plug any social media or websites. Go ahead. This is uh, your section right here. You can shamelessly promote yourself as much as you want. All right. Well, I, I sell uh, used shower curtain rings, and they're available <laughs> at showercurtainrings.com. All, all uh, proceeds go directly to me. Uh, Excellent. Magfest.org. Not .com. Magfest.com goes to Magnolia Festival. Uh, Magfest is, again, January 23rd through 26, 2015, in National Harbor, Maryland, which is 10 minutes from D.C. You can see the Washington Monument from the hotel. Uh, tickets are available at the site. Get them now because the prices go up five dollars every month. Uh, and hope to see you there in January. Oh, right. And uh, social networking: uh, Facebook.com/slash Magfest, Twitter.com/slash Magfest. Uh, just start typing stuff.com/slash Magfest. You'll usually find other things we have too. <laughs> You'll find them everywhere. They're plastered. Um, that's cool, man. Well, hey, Mister. Uh, what is it? Uh. I already forgot your name, Mr. Nick. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Come on, Josh. What are you doing? Sorry, no, I was trying to find your... I was going to call you by your last name, but I don't have your Facebook app right now. Um, Marinelli. Marinelli, exactly. Uh, are you Italian, by chance? Hey, you guts! I mean, my last name is Italian, but you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to stand here and pretend like I know a lot about it. <laughs> well, Mr. Marinelli, Nick, the newbie, thank you for coming on to the GG Haven cast. I do appreciate your time. And again, out there, um, I know we have uh, many EU listeners... But, you know, GG Haven will be at MAGFest this year. We're definitely going to take pictures, take some video, maybe get some interviews. as well. Obviously, discuss with Nick that stuff in the background. But the point is, is like if you can't participate, if you're not going to fly, you know, hopefully we can bring it to you. Um, and, yeah, again, Nick, thanks for coming on and telling us about MAGFest and, you know, the unique spin that you guys put on for a gaming slash music slash ridiculous festival. Uh, it's been, it actually sounds like a lot of fun, and I'm really pumped for January since... Um, my birthday is January 15th, so maybe I'll, you know, request that from the family. Get some birthday. MAGFest tickets. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Uh, yeah, I really hope you guys have a big success this year. Hey, thanks for having me, Josh. It's been a blast. I look forward to seeing you there. All right, man. Later. Later.